need a 30 for 30 to show that I'm different like Jordan and Pim and your I need a 30 for 30 like Jalen and Webber. Nobody gon' fuck on my clip. I need a 30 for 30. I had America, my brother Ray Cease Leo is back again with another one of his hot takes. Ray Cease, what you got for him? Man, we're going to talk about LaMelo Ball, man. Um, tough, tough injury for that young man going out for the season with the fractured wrist. Um, but it should not take anything away from what he's done this season. What I mean by that is they should go ahead and just stop, you know, the count, stop the vote, whatever you want to call it. LaMelo Ball is the rookie of the year. Here's why. LaMelo Ball for the most part, for most of this season, had the best season of all rookies from the bench, right? As a six-man, yeah, he's, he finished his season as a starter, but he came off the bench and met every expectation that we had of him and exceeded some in other cases. Um, when it comes to just flat-out statistics, LaMelo Ball dominated in just about every category. First in uh, both assists and steals. But he was also second in scoring and third in rebounding. So your point guard is out rebounding guys who that's supposed to be their specialty. They were drafted to be a rim protector, to be a rim, you know, uh, attacker when it comes to offensive rebounds. And LaMelo Ball is right there, number three. When we talk about player efficiency, the most efficient player, I've been saying this for weeks. LaMelo Ball is not just the most efficient rookie in the league. He's one of the most efficient players in the league. So if I can tell you that he is the best passer, he's clearly one of the better defenders. He's one of the best rebounders amongst rookies. And he's one of the most efficient players in the league. Well, that's a that's the rookie of the year. Point blank, period. Um, it's tough. Like I said, the way he went down and some guys are starting to come on. Some guys are starting to come on in this rookie class. Um, you talk about Edwards, when you talk about Halliburton over in uh, Sacramento, these young men are starting to come on. Right. They're starting to have some really good seasons. So that's no slight at them. But for a guy to come in and to come off the bench and do what he did to earn a starting job and to see that in every facet of the game, he's doing it at a higher clip than everybody else. Head and shoulders above everybody else, if you ask me. It's a clear cut that LaMelo Ball, regardless of where he finishes his season as of right now with a fractured wrist, that young man is the rookie of the year and it shouldn't even be close. Do y'all think... The Hornets gonna survive this injury and still get that eight seed. Man, it's tough. It's, it, I, I, I'll go first on this one. It's tough simply because, like I said, from my standpoint, um, I hadn't seen a lot of Lamelo Ball just simply because the, the young man was playing overseas. Mm -hmm. But when he came into the league, I didn't see him in the very beginning, just because they weren't showing a lot of Hornets games. But I was able to start to get an opportunity to watch this dude play, mm -hmm. and I'm just telling you. Watching him on the floor versus him off the floor is a totally different game. I can see why he's so efficient, but I can also see why the Hornets are that much more efficient. Because when he's in the game, things just flow. Uh, guys get better looks. Not because it's just driving kick from LaMelo, but because the offense seems to flow better. Um, I It's going to be tough, man. And, 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 they, and they have a good team. It's, it's not just LaMelo. Like, they really have some guys that can go. Um, <laughs> whether, whether it be Scary Terry, Bridges, um, I hate I can't think of my guy's Graham. name to play Graham, Graham and my guy to play for Boston. Gordon uh, Hayward. Oh, Gordon Hayward. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. 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 Gordon Hayward. Hooping. Gordon Hayward been hooping, man. Um, but it's because of the young man in LaMelo, it's all been starting to kind of click. So I hope, I hope that it can continue, but I'm just not sure, man. They seventh right now. And you're yeah, you're right. His third. his game is infectious, man. Yeah. It really is in from what I can remember, the Hornets basically have their same team outside of Gordon Haywood. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So if you think about how they fared last year, that's basically what they got unless we're saying Gordon Haywood going to become the man. Right. He has – I, I can say this. When he signed the contract, I was like, uh, I don't know. I think you gave the young man a little too much money. But when he came in, it was like, you know, like who – this is the Gordon Haywood that we saw in Utah. Yeah. Um, but all star man. in the West. That's tough to be all star in the West. Yeah. No yeah. Doubt. No doubt. But losing Lamelo, that's that's gonna be. I think that's gonna be big, man. It will. It will be. But I think their style of play, though, is is good enough to they they've got enough pieces in the East 
Because we always talk, we talk about the East being the yeah. East. Yeah. In the East, they could still, I mean, like right now, I'm looking at it, they're just a game back of Atlanta for the fourth spot. For the fourth spot, and they're at the seventh spot. So it's just yeah. that much. Yeah. How packed, how compacted it is. To me, though, I mean, they could do it, but they're gonna they're gonna have to play exceptionally well down the stretch, which of course that's that's obvious. But the Pacers are gonna still be a team to 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 watch behind, watch from your rearview mirror. Toronto, Chicago, Chicago. Yeah. They they gon they gon they gon be in the mix. Shut up and don't don't tell America that I am Miami <laughs> only because of James. Yeah. But um but now that's that's the truth though. I mean, those teams are coming, and I think the Pacers are starting to pick it up now. They're starting to see opportunities where okay, look, they they a little down, they a little they a little depleted. No Lamelo, let's let's see if we can make a push because the Pacers to me have been really disappointing, and Toronto. Yeah, you wouldn't have thought I coming agree. into the season. I agree. We didn't think coming into the season them guys I told you, would I not be in the playoff mix. We yeah. didn't think that. Now. So so Ray, let me see if I could change your mind. Okay. On your take, okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to run these stats by you. Uh, player A, 23 points, six rebounds, two assists, yep. one steal, zero bo- blocks, 28 minutes a night, right? Yep. Uh, player B, 18 points, four rebounds, seven assists, one steal, zero blocks, 31 minutes. Who would you say would be the if – they, if they both were rookies, which one, player A or player B? Just just off the strength of those numbers, just, just the numbers. When, yeah, yeah. Just when I hear it, right? Okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm not even trying to guess who these two guys are, but just off the gotcha. strength of those numbers, I would go with the first set of numbers with the with the, okay. uh, the higher now, number of points of 23. Now I'm going. Now this player, player A, only played 24 games, while player B played 67 games. Yeah. Would you still give the rookie of the year to player A? Yeah, I, I would. I would. Okay. Um, but I, I see what you're getting at. Um, for me, and, and and this is why like awards can be tricky sometimes. It's why I'm I'm starting the older I get to like not care about the MVP award because you give it to a guy like Giannis two years in a row when Giannis is great, but Giannis ain't the best player in the league. You know what I mean? Like so, I got you. it's I look at awards a little bit differently. I just say who who's the most impactful guy on the floor every, every time he steps on the floor. Um, and like I said, man, there's some rookies coming in. Tyrese Halliburton in Sacramento, that young man is starting to come on, right? Like his efficiency is maybe a point or two behind uh behind Melo. He's a he's a he's a great passer, he's a better shooter right now than Melo, if you ask me. Um, Anthony Edwards is a is a great scorer. I was all wrong about that young man. Um, he's gonna be to me a really good ball player, but neither one of those guys, maybe with the exception of Halliburton, he he shows glimpses of it. But neither one of those guys, in my opinion, when you put them on the floor, their team level rises. Gotcha. When LaMelo steps on the floor, it's kind of like Chris Paul. When you put Chris Paul on the team, that team just becomes better, right? <laughs> it's, it's like it's just insert here, mix here, and then you get the finished product. That's who LaMelo Ball is to me. And it'll be, it'll be like that every year as long as he's playing. My hope for him is that he doesn't become discouraged by this or it doesn't, you know, become like a, a, a injury that messes up his game. And I don't think it will because his game is so much more cerebral um, yeah. than, than than other guys. LaMelo is just a guy, man, that raises the level. LeBron James is a guy that raises a level when he steps on the court. Chris Paul mm-hmm. changes the game when he steps on the court. Steph Curry, his game changes the Golden State Warriors once he's on the court. LaMelo Ball has that ability. And so – even if his numbers were even Stevens with, with, with a guy like Anthony Edwards, well, the Timberwolves are trash. <laughs> you know what True. I mean? LaMelo Ball's team, because to my in my opinion, because when he's on the floor, that's the reason they are legitimately can give people trouble in the postseason. Without him, I still think they can make the playoffs. I just don't know if they can give people trouble now. That, that, that's my only concern about their postseason hopes. Joe, was that was that Zion and Ja? Mm-hmm. Hmm? Okay. I, I I figured that I figured yeah. that, but I was just like I I don't know for sure. But that is a is a is a is a great point. That's a yeah. great point. Um, I always for me for me I always defer to the guy 
that when he steps on the floor, his team just changes, right? His his team just changes. And, and you can see that in guys. You don't even have to know their stats. If you see them play, you can see their teammates get better. And when they step off the court, that's the true testament. When mm -hmm. LeBron James is down right now, the Lakers are going to be bad. Yeah, they'll be bad because AD is hurt too. But they're going to be bad because they have nobody to keep them organized. Last year, the Suns had the exact same squad without Chris Paul. And they were trash. Insert Chris Paul. And now there's somebody. That's who LaMelo Ball can be. That's who he is right now. Forget who he can be. That's who he is right now. And so that's why I say that young man, um, as, as, as horrible of an injury as it is, he should be the rookie of the year. So how did the injury happen? Because I didn't. I saw the video yesterday. He was going to the cup. Then, you know, just went up to lay it up and tried to catch himself, you know, slide back. And, 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 you know, just had a freak injury with, mm -hmm. the, with the wrist, man. Just broke his wrist. Now, Joe, you said Zion played 24 games last year? 24. God, dog. Oh, now, Melo. Uh, has played 4 to 1 and they only yeah. playing what how many games 72 73 yeah something like that yeah. something like that oh he played more than half of the game yeah he didn't play more than half of the season so it's a little you know a little different now LaMelo and Anthony Edwards their stats their stats actually is even Steven now mm -hmm. now that you know Anthony Edwards then came on so that's why I say it's really going to be interesting to see how they if Anthony Edwards continue on the path that he's on mm -hmm. and play the whole season, it's going to be interesting to see how they really, you know. Don't worry, don't worry about that. LeVar got that. <laughs> LeVar and probably he, is going to uh, interject. So. Yeah. Oh, he will. He will. Okay. He absolutely will. I, I'm yeah, about but, to take this somewhere because LeVar is tripping right now. But what about, <laughs> if, but what about if that man gets more of them highlight dunks? Because, like, y'all got to remember, he had a terrible game. Anthony Edwards I'm talking about. Yeah. Anthony <laughs> Edwards had a horrible game. That game he had that spectacular dunk when he put old boy in the rim, yeah, yeah. Yep. But nobody cared because of the dunk. So yep. uh, you think maybe if he has some more of the Instagram highlights, it de it depends because uh, switching the football, Odell, the amazing catch, they lost that game. Yeah, they did. Hey, yeah, they did. That's yeah, they crazy. Did. I don't even remember that now, yeah. Caesar. You probably remember that because that was the Cowboys, oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it yep. was it it was it was an amazing one. Of the, the best catch I've ever seen. I saw it live. I was I'm a Cowboys fan, but yeah, it it turned the tide. They they yeah, played I horrible totally that entire game. They lost the game. No, bro. I totally don't remember that. At yeah, all. we we handled them, but but nobody remembers that because of that uh, because of that catch. Rightly so, rightly so. Um, but that's just what it is, man. So, highlights really can change. Highlights can make a yeah, difference. Outlook. Yeah. Highlights can absolutely make a difference. I, I don't, don't think so. Too, you think Lamelo got in the bag? Levar gonna take care of it. And I think, idea. and I think in this case, Lamelo already has the name recognition. Like, yeah, Edwards is the number one overall pick, but this is Lamelo Ball we're talking about. But so I Lamello think Lamelo was going was sexy was so sexy coming in. Yeah, you know, it was like both of these young men. Both of these young men, though, I really do appreciate the fact that I have seen their games elevate throughout the season. Because, um, like I said, I was I was all out on Edwards. I just thought like. What is it that the Timberwolves expect from him? I, I had no clue what they really expected. Um, I do but not not because y'all. I do remember. The no, you good. You good. I remember the comparison now that they made about Edwards. Yeah, they compared Anthony Edwards to Dwayne Wade. Yeah, I've seen that. <clears throat> and I was uh, he said he got some. Uh, uh, D Wade has mentored him as well. Yeah, I think his his D Wade's former coach is over there at Georgia, maybe. Yeah, and, and, cream? and that cream. Okay. I would have to double, I, 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 yeah. I'll double check that real quick. But I thought, like, after he had that, he had done something good, and like they had a segment on whatever. It's not inside when D Wade on there. What they, what they call it then? Oh, or, I know what you're um, talking about. Um, whatever D Wade and Candace and them on there. Yeah, they had D -Wade players on only. I think players yeah. only. Yeah, they had D Wade on there, and he was talking about Anthony Elwes, and Anthony Elwes is talking about how much he loved D Wade, and if he can be anything like that, you know, what I'm saying, of course, he'll have a great career. Yeah. But I, I think Crean is over there. What's his first name? Tom. Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, yeah, Tom Crean. I think yeah, what he's you, over there, George. What you want to see from from any young guy is growth, especially in, in your rookie year, um, because you are probably the man wherever you come from, and everybody's the man in the NBA. So you have to set yourself apart and show that you can grow in those areas that are your weaknesses. Um, 
and the thing that I just did not see from from Edwards and a little bit of college ball that I saw, the little you know mm-hmm. games and clips here and there, and early on in the season, I didn't see um, I didn't see IQ and I didn't see toughness. And what I mean by toughness is not like the physical toughness. He looks the part. It's just getting past the fact that I just can't go to my go to move all the time and score. And when I don't get that, then what do I do? Yep. Right. Um, but I am starting to see that now. I knew it with the Halliburton kid because I he was like the one college player that I had really kept up with. And so I saw him. And so I knew that he could make the transition. I didn't know if his offensive prowess would be there, but you could see his basketball IQ working in Sacramento. New York, um, New York messed up again. They did. The they did. They did. They did. They did. Because he really him. wanted to play for him. Yeah, they did. And and he is another guy that is most efficient right it doesn't you don't have to put the ball in his hand 24 7 for him to be um effective you see guys like him and guys like Lamelo, and you would think oh they have to touch the ball all the time that's another thing that i like about Lamelo ball he's a point guard but he don't have to have the ball in his hand the entire shot clock in order for him to be efficient exactly he's actually anti that like let's get it moving i'll put you in the right positions i'll get myself in the right position for us to get the best shot. When you can find a superstar in the making like that, and I do think LaMelo is a superstar in the making, when you can find a guy who does not require to have the ball in his hands at that position, man, you got something special because he is truly the antithesis of his father. He is not big ego. He can be. He's very charismatic, yeah. right? He He's very like, I can catch, I can capture the imagination, but he is literally out there just trying to get the most efficient, easy bucket possible because he learned a long time ago somewhere. We can credit LeVar. We can credit his brothers. We can credit his coaches, whoever. He learned that winning will keep your name in the spotlight. If I'm winning, if I'm winning, you will always talk about me. If I got 40 points and we lose, nobody cares. And that's the difference. Yeah. Edwards dropped 40, but nobody's really going to care because they're losing. LaMelo, meanwhile, is doing his thing and his team is winning. And you can see them building something bigger in Charlotte. Well, let me pull y'all caught on this before we end this segment here. <clears throat> what did y'all think about him saying he wasn't in awe of Brum Brum? Then Brum Brum going out there and doing what he did. And then Brum Brum, I think Brum had like 37 that night. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then Brum went over there to Instagram. And I don't know, maybe it's just me. It seemed like most of the pictures Bron posted were pictures <laughs> where LaMelo is in the shot looking yeah. at him like yeah. that. Yeah, looking at him at all. Like yeah. you, you might not have looked up to me in a figurative way, but yeah. you looking up to me for real, for real, as you I know, talked this basketball. Know how, what is that? What is that? <laughs> passive, passive yeah. aggressive? You know how, aggressive. He, he, he the yeah. king of that, ain't he? Yeah. <laughs> you know how he do it. I don't know yeah. if, I don't know if LaMelo, LaMelo very well may be telling the truth. Um, I can't he said see. He looked up to his pop, so yeah, yeah of I, course that's what you would want to hear. Yeah, yeah, that's what you yeah, want yeah, to yeah, say. No doubt. A, a guy like Lamelo, though, who is so cerebral and so like smart with basketball, you would think that he would have studied LeBron in some form of fashion, though, because these are two of the smartest basketball. Pl- Lamelo's just getting stars. So I can't call him one of the smartest ever. No, but, but you get what I'm smart. saying. His I IQ is up there, and LeBron yeah. is literally one of the smartest yeah. basketball yeah. players to ever do it. Just he happens to be it. physically he, he gifted it. too. He sees it. He sees yeah, it. He's, he sees it. But so so the, oh. you you would have to think that he's absolutely studied LeBron or or you know cared to to venture over to say, man, this is one of the guys I want to be like. He claimed he didn't watch ball, and that's why I've heard from a lot of my players. They like playing ball. But yeah. don't like watching it, yeah. and I'm like, oh, what are y'all talking about? How are you not watching the NBA? How are you yeah. not paying watching. attention? I learned so much from watching it, and then going out and trying to emulate it, or yeah. listening to Hubie Brown yeah. break it down, and then going out. A lot of these boys like, man, no, I ain't got time for that. But he's a he's a one off because he actually had a parent that was pushing him to go outside and be better, even though he wasn't watching it. But a lot of these kids don't have that parent that's doing it. So they not watching it and they not putting in the work like that. Yeah. Yeah. And they still and think they think they're going to be him. They yeah, think they're exactly. going to be LaMelo, but they ain't exactly. got LaVar in their life and they ain't watching. You're right. And then and some, of that, and then oh, some of that is, is, is just not true. Um, <laughs> but for you to for you to have a big brother in the NBA, you don't think he watched – Excuse me, um, Lonzo play basketball. 
he watched his brother play. Now, he may not have watched all 82, but right. he watched his brother play. He has league pass when he was living in Lithuania and, and, and L.A. He, he had league he, pass. He and he, California. And, and he flipped and he flipped the game on to see what Lonzo was doing. And what are you doing in that? You're watching the game. You're studying. You're watching what your brother did and say, oh, he should have done that. Well, that's studying the game. Mm-hmm. Point blank period. It's not you sitting down with a notepad. It's you watching, visualizing, and expecting what's going to happen next. That's what he's done. That's why he's a smart ball player. Yeah. Um, y- yes, a lot of it is natural guy given talent. He's six foot six, right? He can handle the rock. So that skill, that's God given ability. But he sees things on the court before it happens. Yeah, that is. He, he boy grow up, man, with his AU. I don't know about that. I know yeah. I ain't played no AU. My yeah. hooping, I hooped every day though. I was yeah. thinking about this today in my neighborhood when I went over there to see my mama. I saw the kids down the street playing. Yep. Of course, they just got the goal. Ain't no full court. It's just right there. And I think back to how that limited my game some until I got with y'all right in yeah. high school. Yeah. Because I had never play, played extensively full court like that. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It just, you know, you play. So my game was a half court game. Now I'm gonna work you out right. a half court. Yeah, no doubt. But all that getting up and down like Lamelo, he been running fast breaks probably since he what they start in the AU earliest AU That's age. Right. What probably 10, 12, 13, something like that. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah. Because I know I saw doing some of our high school games sometimes they would run run out some little little bitty yeah. AU teams, and these mm-hmm. were babies out there. I'm like, mm-hmm. but they nah. getting up and down, they were trying Euros. And I'm talking about kids. I'm like, what the world? But they yeah. brought up like that, getting up and down, man. It's just different world. Yeah. And if and if and if Lamelo says he didn't study the game or didn't watch games like that, I guarantee he's watching it now. That's the next. That's the next step in progression because you can't not study the game and play at a high clip in the NBA. They will expose you immediately. If you're Absolutely. not studying tape, you're not going to beat anybody. Um, mm-hmm. So. That's why I say mm, I, don't, I don't really buy that too much because he's having to do it now. If he never did it before, he's having to do it now. Um, and that'll just take his game to another level. So if, if LaMelo Ball walks to the NBA and has never studied tape before, then the league should be fearful because now he's studying. For, for real. Right? Because now he is yeah. studying and he's going to figure true. out how to be even better than before. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Well, that is Ray's Take America. Uh, I would like to personally say – I feel for my boy, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. You got one right. Yep, yep. But the good news is this kid is, what, 19 years old, man? LaMelo Ball will be playing for, I mean, conceivably 20. Think about this. LaMelo Ball will be playing in the league for 20 years because his game is not above the rim. He he can dunk it. He he can poke it on you, you know, but it's not high flying. All that, skilled. It's all skilled, and that stuff will – he's not the quickest. All of that stuff will be around 15, 20 years from now, and that's dangerous. LaMelo Ball is going to be a name you will have to hear for the next decade plus. My kids wanted me to tell you all to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me across all social media platforms, like the videos, and share them. Did I forget anything? Enter on the post notifications. Y'all heard them. And also – Visit Statement Tees, LLC.com, and shop with us. That's Statement Tees. Every t-shirt you wear makes a statement.